How you doing today? I'm Louis Armstrong, Minister Louis Armstrong. I have another lecture for you, and I would like you to listen to this one. It's very important. It's a crucial time right now. It's a time that we must pay attention to what the Word of God is saying, what is written in the Holy Scripture. This topic is entitled 2018 to 2020, The Fall of the United States of America. Now, some people may say, well, that's kind of harsh, but sometimes you got to give, when you're sick, you have to take medicine, and you got to take medicine to make you feel better. Right now, America is in a crucial time. We're facing a war. We're facing uh, stress uh, with the situation that dealing with um, the, you know, in the NFL taking a knee and all this other stuff. Without people knowing the real reason why these things taking place, like America is going on, like they have no problem, and you have a more compass that's on empty. America attitude toward everything is, hey, look, put some money on it. Let's you know, you know, fix the wound. Let's go ahead on. But it's not like that. America have to understand that it's a part of the word of God. It's a part of biblical prophecy. And if you don't address the things like Jonah was saying, you got violence in your left hand, your right hand, that means social political violence. If you don't address these things, you're going to have a problem. America have a serious problem with many things. You got individuals right now haven't had a raise on their job in four to five or more years. You have landslide profits, but what's happening is that it's not drilling down to the people. You have a problem. In America, if it's going to be the United States of America anymore, it has to address its problems and it has to correct it. Jesus made a statement and said the time of uh, Jonah would be like the time of the coming of the Son of Man. Of the Son of Man time. The time of Noah would be like the time of the coming of the Son of Man. The time of Lot would be like the time of the coming of the Son of Man. We are at that time right now. We're not, we don't have to get to that time. We are at that time right now. And we have to address the problem because the miracle moral compass is on empty. And we have to be able to be the people we need to be now. Why is that? A lot of people don't know. And you can have a book. I'm a useful example. You have a book out there. And I want to talk about this book. And this is more, more than just about an advertisement right now on this book. People don't know that there's individuals like myself could see the future and write about the future. God had me, through the Holy Spirit, write this book, Judgment of America, and it was published in 2006. The information that was known in the book was before 2006. It was published in 2006. Right now, it's a chart in this book show you 21 years of American history. Now we are at the year 2017, and this chart in this book is 100% accurate. People are saying, well, you know, somebody could tell me something before it happened. I'd like to see. It's there. It's right here. Use for example, in 2016, this book say, on page, let me deal with this here. Then we'll go on to open this up because this needs to be known. This book say, in 2016, that you would have bad hurricanes. Well, what you had? You had Hurricane Matthews. 2017 on this chart, it said you're going to have grievously bad hurricanes. What happened this year? You had Irene, you had Harvey, and what you got? You got over $10 billion of damage that have happened. Now, people say, well, coincident. Let's go back. In 2004 and 2005, it said you were going to have bad hurricanes in four and grievously bad in, in 2005. What you had in 2005, you had Katrina. And see what people's not understanding that God have revelations in the Bible that deal strictly with the United States of America. And we need to know that. 
in these writings like this, I would not be talking about the fall of America if the revelation wasn't shown to me. So I'm not going to talk about something and it don't happen. Uh, you say, I'm not looking for a fall. America is walking into a fall. It ain't something I'm looking for to happen. I, it ain't that I want to be right or wrong. It's America is walking in opposition to the will of God. And by walking in opposition to the will of God and say, in God we trust and that we are a Christian nation, America is setting itself up for a fall. It's more concerned about capitalism. It's more concerned about the social status and what it wants people to believe. And they force through Hollywood, they forcing more uh, 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 decay on America through uh, the church is not being able to integrate themselves and be the type of people they need to be. The most segregated place in America is on Sunday morning and Sunday in the churches of America. And we are not uh, together, but we claim that, oh, I'm a Christian. I'm, I follow Jesus. I'm a part of God. But you're not acting like it. And if you're not acting like it, God is not seeing you like it. We got a problem now. We need to address our problems. We have a problem with racism in America. We need to address that. We don't need a president fueling the fire, making it worse. You need to make it better. And what he's doing, he's the right candidate for the fall of the United States. He don't know that he's a candidate for the fall. But he got to be turned around. He don't want to be turned around America. You got to turn him around. We don't want America to fall, just like God said to Jonah about Nineveh. Should I destroy Nineveh? And that's why he said, Jonah time doesn't be like the Son of Man. The question is right now, in God's mind, from the way the scripture is showing us and the revelation is showing us, should I destroy America? Now you got to decide what you want to do. Because you are American. And this is not time to be playing around. You need to get this book. Have your friends to get this book. Get into this book and read this book. There's revelation that never been taught in a pulpit in America that's in this book. This book is showing you the things that's going to happen next. It shows you that American economy is going to have a 25-year judgment in it. Where it's going to go from good to grievously bad. And people think everything all right. Oh, well, you know, we got jobs and stuff. Some of these people, they ain't going to go look for no job no more. And so we saying we got a certain percent a job uh, uh, thing and everything is fine. No, it's not fine. It's not fine. We're spending money left and right. We're almost $20 trillion in debt. Come on. That, that, that don't mean you're right. You go from during the time when, when uh, Clinton had it with a surplus in 1999, I mean, starting at 2000, at 2000 to twenty trillion dollars in debt. That's not all right. And this book said it and showed it way before time. But then, how many TV coverage covering the judgment of America? How many preachers out saying, "Let me read that book so I can teach my congregation the judgment of America"? They care less. They care about you giving them money, tithes, and offerings in order to build their vision instead of the vision of the United States of America. It's a new time. This is time to wake up. It's time for the resurrection of the dead. People, you are dead to the knowledge of knowing what God's will is for this nation and this world. You sleep. You need to be woke up. You need to be caught up in the air, in the, in the will of God, into the Chicago glory of God, revelation for his peoples. So you could travel in this air time, the air of the, the time of uh, Aquarius. We have a transition now we're dealing with, and we need to understand this. Now, now let's go with this. We're dealing with the moral compass. And we in Genesis, we'll deal with Genesis 15, 16. For the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet filled. Now, most people, when they read about Abraham, they're going to say, well, Abraham was talking about Israel, and uh, it was the promise of Israel. 
King James compiled this Holy Bible, had this Holy Bible compiled. At the time when King James had all this done, they were studying alchemy. They understood things. You had people, part of the secret order, the heavy orders, not just this stuff that fly by night, uh, Blue Mason stuff and all this other stuff right now that everybody kind of be a part of it, uh, uh, the uh, uh, stars, Eastern stars and some of that, Rose of Christian and all that. This was much deeper. These boys were deeper than that. They got the knowledge from their fathers, and their fathers got the knowledge from their fathers. They go all the way back to Egypt and beyond. Now, what we are seeing in this Holy Bible is that in Genesis, Abraham is a figurative person that dealing with something that's going to happen in the future, which this future is before this paradigm shift, which is right now in our time. And he's dealing with this nation the nation of the United States of America. That's what that's all about. Anybody tell you anything different is lying to you. I know what I'm saying. They are lying to you. Quit following people that are lying to you. We're coming out of the age of Pisces. And the age of Pisces is an age of deception. And the church have deceived the people without understanding it. They have done things that they just followed the leader and the leader followed the leader. And all I say, all the blind are going to go in the ditch. It's time to cut this umbilical cord that America and the other nations and Christianity and the other religions have put in your life. And you've got to become a spiritual person seeking the will of God. There's nothing wrong with the Holy Bible. You cannot literally... Read the Holy Bible talking about, oh, I know God's will. Because underneath the writing is the revelations of God that he have chosen for his people. And at the time of King James, you had these Shakespeare type individuals, etc. They knew what was underneath it. They knew that all this stuff from Genesis to Revelation was concerning King James' kingdom or his land in the Western Hemisphere, the United States of America. They already knew the United States was going to become a great nation. Already knew it. Because the prophecies in the Bible show you, as the lightning cometh out of the east and shine even unto the west, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. But wherever the caucus is, there will the eagles be gathered together. Come on now, let's, let's get on board, let's understand this thing, and quit playing with God. Quit playing with this book. Quit playing this stuff. This is why I'm involved in Hebrew typology. We got to understand that Hebrew typology is a genre that was used many years ago. And why they did not want to use it now? Because it revealed too much. It's going to tell you who the Antichrist is if you begin to study it from Hebrew typology. It's going to tell you what these things mean. And my friends, let's deal with this. In Genesis 15, 16, for the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet filled. Who is the Amorites? Break it down. Take the word. In Hebrew typology, it's talking about the future. The Amorites. Look at the word. Put this underneath it so you can understand what this word means. You got the A, you got the M, you got the R, you got the I, you got the S. Put the gaps underneath there. Get to it. It's America. The iniquity of America is not yet fulfilled. This is what it's saying. Prove me wrong, preachers. Prove me wrong. God is here. I'm not anybody. I'm a messenger. This is my time to come forth. Prove me wrong. I know what I'm talking about. The revelation is here. You've got to be able to know how to use the arts, the writings, and the things. And this is how the Jews always say about the Christian. They always say, the Jewish scholar always say about the Christian. The Christians always come with their garments off. I mean, they got half of the way to see things. They literally read it, but they don't know how to use the the arts in order to go into the writing and show the truthism that's inside the writing. You got to have your whole garment on. You can't come halfway. You need to know what they're saying so you can teach the sheep what God wants to know if you're going to be a true shepherd of God. Because if you don't, y'all, you is a, a shepherd of Satan. And that's how a lot of the organization is. And some of them connected to the organization that are part of Satan and don't even know it. That's the sad thing. Don't even know it. Let's deal with it. At this time of Abraham, Abraham tell him that, hey, at that time, this 400-year event is going to happen. And that nation who they serve will be judged. 
That was King James Nation, America. In 400 years, that was America started in 1619, not 1776. America started in 1619 in Jamestown, Virginia. And they started the assembly in a church in Jamestown, Virginia, in the church. And at that time, they passed a law. In August the 1st, 1619, they passed a law on what it was, on tobacco, the price of tobacco, and what they were going to do with the uh, indentured servants, the law for the indentured servants and slaves for punishment. These are known fight. Google it. And this is the countdown of the 400 years. And we got to see that. 400 years of 360 days of a year will take us not to uh, 2019, but will take us to October 30th, 2013. Do your calculations and you're going to see this. Now he says shortly after that, after the 400 years of America, of that nation, shall I judge and they will come out with great substance. Now, what's happening? Right now, America is going through a judgment, a 21-year judgment. Now, when did this 21-year judgment start? It started in the year 2000. Why do I say this judgment started in the year 2000? Instead of, as I say when you do the calculation, October 3, 2013, because there's another revelation. And the revelation is in Revelation 8 that deal with the seven seals. This revelation shows you that silence in heaven for the space of half an hour. And it showed you after the seventh seal was open. When the seventh seal was open, it was open at 2000. And when it was open at 2000, silence in heaven for the space of half an hour was 21 years. So when you look at it and do your calculation, heavenly time is like a thousand years to earth. Uh, uh, I mean, earth have a thousand years to heavenly one year. So if that's the case, you divide. 48 half an hour until 1,000, you get roughly 21 years, a long 21 years. That's how you get the calculation. That's a revelation there. It's right there. Have you ever heard it in the pulpit? No, you have not. Because it wasn't time for you to hear certain things. This is your day. This is the call of Jonah. This is the call of Noah. This is the call of Lot. You have to see it now. It ain't time to play around with this. What am I doing? Am I trying to stress you out? No, I'm trying to wake you up. I'm trying to resurrect the dead because the church is dead. You may go dressed up, looking good, driving your caddy, driving your Mercedes, driving this, putting in the preacher's place, putting in the musician's slot or whatever else, but baby, let me tell you something, people. You are actually spiritually dead. And this is the resurrection. This is what the resurrection is about. It ain't about somebody in no grave. Them people done went on to their place, to glory land, etc. They living good. They are translated from this body to another. That's going to happen all through human history. This is the revelation that they're talking about in Scripture. This is the time of the revelation that they're talking about, the resurrection of the dead. When the word of God is coming to quicken the spirit of God's people so they can do the thing that the word of God said they could do. But God has said for thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. See, you want to go to another galaxy and you're preaching in the pulpit telling you, oh, Jesus is coming back and we're going to be resurrected and we're going to the place where Jesus is at and we're going to be there forevermore and blah, 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 crap. Wake up. You ain't going nowhere. You're going to be here on this earth. You're going to be with all the kingdom and don't want to think that, oh, I don't care what you're saying. You're going to die. And the rest of them are going to live a thousand years because in this paradigm shift, as he told Abraham in the same area, he said, Thy will go to thy fathers in peace and live at a good old age. That was not for Abraham, a person back there 2,000, I mean over 6,000 years ago or whatever it is. What it is, it's about you. In this paradigm shift, you going to live like in the possession of equal lot, you're going to live right there, coming out of the dark age into the age, the air age, the age of Aquarius. You're going to live like down there in Gemini. I know them lived a thousand years. You think what know them did wasn't real? You think them years were something to play with? The Bible just wrote it. It was just written. Know them lived 900 and something years. Mankind could live because what you had a DNA change. And that DNA changed when the planet Sirius is over here 
And when it come out of that dark age, it's going to be a DNA change. Science tell you there's something happening to the human body right now. We have a DNA transformation that's beginning to happen. New strains popping up. There's something going on right now. See, we are one with the universe. We are one with God. God is one with us. God is one with the universe. And we're in a order. And in this order, everything is together. You cannot separate God from the universe. You cannot separate us from the universe. You cannot separate the universe from God. You cannot separate the universe from ourselves. We're all together. God created it like that. And we got to wake up to these facts. As long as we're in this physical body, you is one with the universe. And we must see this. Now, this is important because we need to know that in that prophecy, he's talking about America. That 400 years was not a 400 year time when no Jews was over in Israel doing this and that and that. That ain't, that ain't it. Okay, quit trying to force something to be something that is not. That is here. When you had slavery in America, the tribulation is about the slavery in America. America has been so biased that it, it refused to see the word of God the right way and resurrect itself to see that, hey, look, we got to correct this thing. This thing is all wrong. Then you wonder why these things is happening, intervening with your television set, intervening with your, your football broadcast because they're talking about bowing the knee and racism in America now because you ain't trying to see it. You need to start seeing what's going on in America. And then you begin to see a lot of other ills of America. 50 years ago, you ain't have two men sitting on the TV camera kissing. Now you got them kissing right in the middle of the shows, and it's all right. This is acceptable. I'm a Christian. Shoot me. Whatever they want to do. This is America. Whatever they want to do, they can do. But no, that ain't how God got it. He said the time a lot. And at the time a lot, God forbid that. But America have came to accept it. It's a norm to America. You see, we don't want to address these things. 30 years ago, an act like that. When you study from the psychologist and the psychiatrist's point of view, those people were sick. But no, they ain't sick now. That's all right. Everybody want to, not everybody, but a lot of people want to be like that. And the television is there to propagate it, pushing it further and further. But then it's all right. America don't have no problems. Everybody else got the problem. America is this new age, this new nation. America is sick. It has a moral compass problem, and it's on their feet. And we need to address these things. Now, why I'm talking about that? Because these are the things that happen. Man will be, will be buried at a good old age. That means man is going to we're go in this paradigm shift. Man, humanity is going to live at a much longer age. They're going to live, some going to even begin to live up to a thousand years. And what? Are they going to look old? Old like an old person, a thousand year old person? Because people look pretty bad sometimes when they're 110, 105. No, no, no. They're going to have a DNA change, and their DNA change is going to be, they're going to look like anybody who talk up here and talk about near death experience. And when the person go to the other side in that experience, they see the elderly people as no more than 30 to 40 years old. That's the same thing going to happen on this earth. They say the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of this earth being as the kingdom of heaven, that means that that, gonna, that similarity is going to happen. Man going to have a DNA change. Now, why is that important? Now, what else reveal and show you that things like this happen, fall happen to a nation, etc.? The world, and we got to see, the world that revolved around the Christian, and we've got to see this, the world that revolved around Christianity and America is why the King James Bible was written. Now, people never ask, well, why the King James Bible was written? Was King James just word, want them to know God? No, King James ain't had no problem. King James ain't write that Bible for that reason. King James wrote that Bible so the individual initiates and other people that know how to uh, translate the Bible correctly, they'll know that these events in the Bible revolve around the events that's going to occur in America. See, you got people literally teaching the Bible. They're going on to the other foreign countries, et cetera, which is all right to do that and tell people about God. But what you're doing, you're telling them that 
These stories is all about the past. These stories are literally about, you know, other things, uh, nations and stuff in the past. But them stories is about America, the United States of America. They are not. When you hear Joseph talking about the Pharaoh's dream, that's about America. Believe me. I translated it. It's in there. Judgment of America. Please get this book. When you hear them, Jonah talking about Nineveh and etc., boom. It's about America. Read the first chapter of this book. Get this book. You read this book. This is not just advertisement I'm dealing with right now. You need this book. John told you about a small book. Get the book. This is my time now to come to the people. This is my day and time. This is my spot. And I'm coming. And I'm giving you these truthisms because you need them. Now, why is this? The nation, group of peoples, individuals moving in are out of, out of a, uh, uh, it's a corrupt state is what the Holy Bible is about. Now, why do I say that? Because the Bible deals with peoples that have problems. The Bible shows you examples of people moving from one state to another. The Bible shows you that people get caught up in this and God take them out of that. Or God permit them to go in there and God take them out of that. It's always about some corrupt state and that they are in, the nation are in, etc. And when you talk about Israel, it's always about Israel coming out of condition. Uh, people putting Israel in a condition and Israel coming out with great substance. Israel coming out of condition. A person is in a condition or in a situation where his mind don't know what right decision to make and God intervenes so they can make right decisions. The Bible is all about those kind of things. Getting you in line with the will of God. It's all about that. Now, let's get into other cultures that deal with it. We got to understand that out of the Egyptian area, the Mediterranean, that's where the Bible come from, from the area of Alexander, Egypt. The Bible did not come from Rome. The Bible did not come from the European nation. The Bible was developed in Africa. The whole thing came from Africa. Jesus, as the story goes, Jesus went into Egypt. So you see him coming out of Egypt and dealing in the Palestine area. And all that was connected and was a province of Egypt. Africa. So we need to start seeing this thing like it is and quit trying to train, change things and leave the black image out of all this. It's so much trying to leave the black image out that we are teaching lies and to teach the truth. They say black folks started during the time of slavery and they had the, they were savages and they had to read it. Uh, they don't tell you about the Mayas and the uh, 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 somehow empire and empire that they had already developed and institution they had. They don't tell you that. America has lied to its people so much that in your educational system, you're dealing with a big lie. The moral compass has been on empty for a long time. Now, do I hate my nation? No, no, no. I was born in America. I love America. But sometimes America got to withstand tough love. I love America. Do I want to see America fall? People, let me tell you something. It ain't up to me. When it comes to God, this whole world is our home. If it come to seeing God's will, I'm going to stick to God's will over any place, any area. God's will is the most important thing in our life because we are eternal beings. There's no little place going to define us as individual human beings. Nobody, I don't care what color you are. There's no one place going to define you. And you must always remember that. I always say we come to this earth as spiritual beings to do a physical experience, to have a physical experience. We are greater than this. This individual seed of us, is we are much greater than that. So don't limit me to this shell here. I love it while I'm here. I love America while I'm here. But don't say that when I'm on the other side, I'm traveling on, that I'm, I came from America and this is all what life is about. Born, live, and die. No, no, no. When I came here, I came here in the knowledge of knowing it. A veil was placed there. When I leave here, the veil is going to be lifted. While I'm here, if I stay in the will of God, sparks of who I really am or who you really are will be revealed to you. Come on. People, get this thing right. Quit going to church and just singing in the choir and clapping your hands and sitting in the pool, 
and, and a few and, and just just going there with this um, mind that you have all about you. This is about a world that God got for us to shape and make. When he said to us, mankind, be fruitful, multiply, replenish, subdue, you know, and gave us a diet and what to eat and stuff. That was for us, every human being that comes to this planet. That wasn't just to Adam. That was to every human being that's come to this planet. Adam, Adam was just a figurehead to all of this sin. He was just a figurehead to all of this. So the Bible, that, that Bible, that when you see that, that was talking to you today. Not yesterday. Time is past, present, future, one. And we got to understand this. Now let's deal with this. China. And the reason I wrote this about China and the I chain is because this is something that came to China from the area of Egypt. And before Egypt, it could have been, uh, and it was, uh, Egyptian artifacts you could find in the Grand Canyon area over in, in, in America. You could find them in South America, etc. And what we're dealing with, the I chain. Now, why is the I chain so important? Because the I chain have 64, it's 64 I chain. In the set. And what they do, it deals about, it shows you, if you study about it, 405 years that a nation is going to exist. Never have there been a nation existing more than 405 years without a dynasty change, or a change. It always have a change. And we have seen this in many nations. France ain't the same France it used to be. England definitely ain't the same England it used to be. And some other nations that have been a long time. Okay. Now, even America before it became the United States of America, America during the time of the Indians and the settlers ain't the same place it used to be. Okay, and what I'm saying is that there are, there's changes in nations. And in these nation change, you have 405 years before, then anytime after 405 years, then they're gonna be unchanged. All through history. Someone's gonna last that long. America right now is 400 in a few years, 404 years when you deal with 360 days a year. And America is at its change. Now, if you deal with the way we count time, we'll say that America, by 2024, America must be done changed. There ain't no problem now. And so what I'm dealing with right now, the United States of America, I'm dealing with the fall of the United States of America. So America at that point, the fall. Now, so what does that mean? America must change. Why? It must change its moral compass. Why is that? Because that's what history shows. These things actually is real. These are revelations that the Chinese have had, that the fathers have passed on. And that's what Abraham said. You're going to go to our father in peace. In other words, you're going to know the knowledge of the fathers. And you're going to live at the good old ways. That means you're going to be at the time that's going to happen at the paradigm shift where mankind is going to change his DNA, and he got to live in a good way. And this is what we're dealing with. Now, why is that important? Because if you take 64 and multiply it times 105, what do you get? 25,920 years. Why is that so important? Come on, let's, let's, let's understand that this. Because this is the time of the possession of the equinox. And the Egyptians recorded thousands of years ago. These people already know this. People are talking about, well, our culture is more advanced than that. No, 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 no. Oh, no. Noah time was more advanced than our time. The time before Noah and Adam time were more advanced than our time. And we got to understand this. We are the one trying to catch up because we went through this dark age. We're the one trying to catch up. So, do you know what I'm saying? We, we have more, because we can't even build a pyramid. Our, our engineers and architects can't even build a pyramid right now. The same pyramid that's sitting there, pyramid of shows, that we call the shows. Our architects can't build it now. We can't imagine how they move those stones right now. They were dealing with a high tech knowledge that's much higher than what we have. Right. But we want to say, oh, they ain't have that twist, they ain't have this. Quit lying. We got Egyptologists and stuff lying because the system wants you to believe that this race of people that's living on the earth and dominating the culture right now is as high as it could get. Get out of here. They want you to believe that Adam and Eve was the first uh, humans on the planet. Get out of here. The Bible says, let us make man in our image and our likeness. What about that? See, no one want to face these realities. They want to literally read stuff without researching it and understanding what it really means. 
And this is why our world in this condition, because our religious spiritual organization is off course. There are most more races than anything on the planet. Your spiritual organizations are the racist organizations. And you want to say, uh, David Duke and them, they racist and they this and that. Yeah, they got that other buddy. Come on. They only live and go. But our spiritual organization, they've been here for hundreds and hundreds of years. Thousands of years, and they got more racism than anything else. And it's not just racism, bias is everything. Not only by a race of people, but by a whole culture. White folks killing white folks in arenas in Rome and stuff like that. Say it was just Christian. No, 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 no. Oh, you got people like in Africa right now. We don't even put it on the news. The news put what they want to put on it. You got thousands of people dying in Africa right now. You got holocausts happening in Africa right now. They never hit the daily news. More people than any small holocaust happened at the time of Hitler. Hitler, they'll make Hitler look like a choir boy. But no, are you hearing these things? No. You're hearing what they want you to hear. It's time to resurrect yourself from the dead. Wake up, America. Now, let's deal with this. Why is this our chain so important? Because this our chain going to show you. That America, it's on, it's on its last leg. America is about to make a change, a real serious change. Was it going to survive or fall? Now, now when you look at, at the story of uh, Israel during the time when the kings came in and Saul came in, Saul came in, you had rules before Saul, they had the judges. But Saul came in, and why do they talk about Saul the way they talk about? Because Saul is a particular king. That happened at the end of, of Israel. America is seen as Israel. There will be no Israel over there unless the new Israel was over here, America. See, they're not telling you the real Israel. This is the one in the West. This is the Israel of the West, right here. And this Israel had a king that came into it that was known as Saul. And he had a wife. Uh, a family member known as Michelle. Come on, people, read the book. Barack Obama played the role of the prophetic role of Saul. Who, who led the nation after Saul? Saul's son led the nation. That's who Donald Trump kills. And what did Saul's son do? He was part of the change because Saul's son couldn't run the nation right, so God had to bring in David. This is what's going on in this paradigm shift. This is what's going on in America. This is what King James wants you to see. He's gone, but the word is here. But the church, is the church preaching this? Now, some of the secret orders know this, but is the church talking about this like this? Nah. Oh, so something happened in the past. The Jews stood constantly telling you, David got to come. Who is David? David is the son of man. Who is the son of man? The one that Christ tell you about is coming. That's what the apologetic Christian call the return of Christ. What is the Christ? Christ is a title. The Christ is a deliverer. And we got to see this. This is the time of the deliverer, the messenger, the come. And we must see these things. The Muslim call him the Mahdi. This is the same person. Some of the Muslims teach that the Mark D and Jesus is supposed to come out. Come on. That is Jesus. Okay? He is Jesus. The same one that the, that the Muslim looking for, the same one that the Buddha's looking for, the same one that the Christian looking for, the same one that the Hindu looking for, was well, one person. The one that Jesus said is going to be like Jonah, time, going to be at the time like Lot. This is what we got to see. Now, the literal teaching of the Holy Bible is the destruction of the black race. And why I'm dealing with the black race and the white race. See, you know, I put a twist on that. It's not just the black race. The reason I put the black race before the white race, because this racial, racial thing, black race and white race, came develop in America, not in Europe. And in the ignorance, the black man studied the Bible from the way, the literal way, that the white American taught them to study it. And, 
And the intentions of the white at that time was to keep the Negro in line. Be subject unto thy master. Serve and obey thy master and all this other nonsense stuff. And not understanding what it really was about. See, every word in the Bible, everything in the Bible ain't what it's supposed to be. You got to know how to discern, discern what it is. The will of God, what God wanted, or God permitted them to put something in it so you could see it and say, hey, look, no, you know, this ain't perfect. This got flaws in it. They use the term world, the end of the world, when it's talking about the end of the age. You got to go back into the the earlier writing to, to translate it to see. So if somebody read the Bible talking, oh, every word is the word of God, every word is God, get out of here. The book says, study to show thyself approved. A workman that rightly divide the word of truth need not be ashamed. The Bible tells you that. So you got to study the Bible. Don't just literally read this book and talk about you know this. The literal translation of the book is the destruction of the races. It's the destruction of the races. Because this is not a book to literally read. Now, let's deal with this up. Because you need to understand Hebrew typology. People, please listen to these tapes over and over again. Listen to the lectures over and over again. In my new book, my title will be Prince Louis Jerome. And I'll tell you one day why I use the term Prince Louis Jerome. If you know about sacred geometry and you know uh, about Tetra-Romaton, you can understand that. Louis is 22, Jerome is 22, and Prince is 22. You divide 7 into 22, you get pi, pi, pi. I was born October 22nd. If you go by my birth, 22, that's uh, divide 7 into that. That equals 3.14 as well. So you got four pieces of pi. That means that the life is to be completed so it could let the word of God or the will of God flow through the vessel. And that's why I'm not just like any other minister or any other preacher or any other messenger. I'm bringing you truthism. That's what the clouds is all about. Truthism. Now, when we deal with this, we'll see that after 2018, the American Negro must, must, because the word of God has to be fulfilled, American Negro must control uh, a commonwealth within the United States. Now, these areas, Florida, Georgia, South Carolina, are ideal areas. And why I say that? Because that land was already promised to black folks. And the will of God is pointing that like Jonah, when after the well had brought Jonah, or had Jonah inside of it, showing you the transformation of the end of the transatlantic slave trade, uh, he was down in the bottom like Cargo, and now he was throw to the shores of the, in the well swallowing him up, showing you events that's happening with Jim Crow and all this other stuff after slavery. He still had to go through something. And so that's what the black man been going through. So God had the well to spew him up. In other words, it's time to give the message to God. It's time to do God's will. It's now. The black man time to do God's will is right now. That's why you see these events happening and all this confusion that they call confusion and chaos against the system is happening. Black Lives Matter, uh, the uh, protests that the athletes are giving and stuff like that and more and more stuff coming against a system that's unfair and unfit for, for all of America. And this is why this is happening. It's going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. It's not going to get smaller. It's going to get bigger. Please, people, understand it's going to get bigger. Not because of the fact that black folks alone are supposed to be trying to correct this, but white folks in, in our constitution that the majority is supposed to take care of the welfare of the minority and, and the American people in large is not taking care of its own people, not facing up to this constitution. You're talking about it, you're writing it, you're saying you believe in it, but hey, you ain't doing what you're supposed to be doing. There's a problem existing. Your moral compass is on empty. And we got to see this. So the will of God is going to be. Them revelation that's in the Bible, they're going to be. You ain't going to erase them. You ain't going to bypass them. Because they, see, this stuff is already laid out. We're dealing with a metric. We're dealing with a hologram. This thing is already laid out. See, we ain't just making history. History already got its pattern. 
We're, we're flowing in his streams. We're flowing in the pattern that God has for this, this planet. Because this planet, this universe is a school for the spirit people. And we are the spirit people that came down into this dimension, dimension to go to school. And we don't understand. We think it's like a school school. No, life is a school. And we got to understand that. Now, why is this so important? In January 1865, you had General William, uh, yeah, 1865, you had General William T. Sherman. He met with 20 African American leaders who told him that land ownership was the best way for the blacks to survive, to ensure the, and enjoy their new, newly found freedom. On 16, the 16th of January of that year, Sherman issued Special Field Order Number 15. Now, this wasn't just Sherman did, it was out of the direction of the president. So what happened to that land? What happened to that territory? That border land that Jonah was to be speared out on. What happened to that land? Well, that's what it's really about. What happened to that land that the black man is supposed to have? What happened to that reparation that blacks are supposed to receive? You had Tricky Dick, president, coming out of that thing. Well, Johnson, well, now they're coming out of the South. And you had these different presidents coming, and they took back, and you had, uh, before that, you had the one that's on the $50 bill. Uh, you had Grant was a part of it. Then you had the other ones, and they, they gave that land back, that territory back, and they never fulfilled the things that they should have did to the black man. And why? Because it wasn't the time. Am I mad at them not fulfilling? No, because it wasn't the time. This is the time. That wasn't the time. That 400 years had to be fulfilled. And that 400 years had not yet been fulfilled. This was the time at this time, that was the time that they had, the America had a spark of the golden ratio. When you look at the 400 years of 144,000 days or 360 days a year, when equal to the 400 years, the 144,000 days, if you do the sacred geometry and divide sacred geometry into 101.618 into 144,000, and you count the days from August or from uh, August of uh, 1619, you find out that it lands on the year 1863 to 1864. What was that? That was the time that Lincoln wrote the Emancipation. And the next year, of January, he had it given to the mass of the people. See, people don't realize that God already is in this. The history of America is tied up in the scripture. And we must see it. But do you have anyone out there before now breaking it down like that? They can't. Only the messengers can break it down like that. And now it's time for the resurrection. Now, you got, you got a coastal, reserved coastal land in South Carolina, Georgia, Florida, in Genesis 15, 13 to 16, after the 400 years, after the 400 years, from 1619 to 2019, if you want to go that way, do it from that way, the African American shell come out with great substance. That means commonwealth. You need your territory. What did the peoples of Israel have? They came out of, 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 of Egypt, or out of a certain part of Egypt. They never left Egypt because Canaan and all that was owned and controlled by the Egyptians. You study history. Many times the pharaohs went up into that area to deliver the people from the Syria and deliver them from different peoples, battle on different peoples that was trying to war in the pharaoh's territory. So America is not to go over to Africa, South America, and all of this. Black America is to develop themselves on the North American continent. This is your Israel. This is the area. And we got to see this. But hey, have you ever seen a preacher get in the pulpit and tell you this? No, because they have not been a part of the rest.
resurrection of the dead. They've been part of the dead. That's why Ezekiel says, son of man. He's talking about our time. Son of man. Messenger. Go to the wicked and the righteous so thy blood will not be on thy hand. And tell them. See, this is what it's about right now. I'm going to tell you what you may not want to hear. And I'm doing it out of love because I don't want your blood on my hand because there's some destruction got to come to get this right. I don't want your blood on my hand. You need to know this, America. You need to know the will of God because God loves you. And God wants you to be a nation like on a mountaintop that cannot be hid with those ideals that's going to come into our life to enlarge us, to enrich us, to make us wild, full of better, never to restrict us. This is what America is to be. And this is why I'm coming like I'm coming. I want to see that vision. I want to see that vision because it's going to come to pass, but I want to be able to see it come to pass as well. So we need to do what we need to do. We got to understand. Coming out with great substance. People talk about reparation. Other countries talking about reparation, but do you see it on the news? The UN talking about America dealing with reparations, but do you see it on the news? They don't want you to see the truth. They don't want you to know this stuff because they know once you hear this stuff and know that other nations is dealing with it and know that the United States got to deal with it, then they're going to say, oh, that's more fuel on the fire. So that's more debt we got to go into. But let me tell you something. Sometimes I don't want to pay the cost to get my car fixed. But I got to reach back and pay it. Sometimes I don't want to do this and I don't want to do this. But I got to reach back and pay it. Because it's my responsibility to keep the house in order. And it's America's responsibility to pay its debts and keep the house in order. America have not truly they keep ratifying the Equal Rights Amendment. Don't tell me you love me when you keep ratifying the Equal Rights Amendment. How could you say you're a nation of love? How could you say, come on, American people. Come on, white folks. You got to help this thing out. You got to follow your constitution. You got to take care of your people. How could you say you love me when every 25 or so years you ratify the Equal Rights Amendment? Come on. What is your problem? We're in 2017, going to, about to go into 2018, and you ratify the Equal Rights Amendment. That means somebody, a white person, could come from Canada. They could come from uh, Europe. They could come from the Soviet Union. And they could come to the United States, and they could come be citizens. They, are, they don't have to ratify anything. But you got people who have worked tirelessly, families have worked in this nation for 400 years, helped build this nation to sweat off their backs and their ancestors' backs is part of the sweat that made a nation, this nation great, and they got to ratify the Equal Rights Amendment. Come on. This is why you're dealing with a judgment. This is why you're dealing with the situation you're in. I didn't write this because America, I don't like America. I was writing this because this is where American history is at. It is at its own. You see, God ain't gonna let no country, no nation, America, no other nation, morally corrupt the world. See, you got to understand that God in control. Not the Rothschilds, not the other individuals, not the uh, uh, Rockefellers, not J.P. Morgan, all them boys. God is in control. And he let them do the things that they do when they want a new world order, they want control a certain way. God let them flow through it because nature do its thing. The universe got to do its thing. The universe got to show you that you're corrupt. The universe got to show you that certain things wrong. I'm not against Rothschild. I'm not against these people. They do what they do. Just like I'm not against Donald Trump. He's doing exactly what he's supposed to do at this particular time of human history. So there'll be a reason why when someone like myself come and tell you that uh, American World Congress is empty because you have permitted certain people to get in office because you is corrupt, America. You is corrupt. The church is corrupt. That's why all this corruption is here. We have more abortions in America than you have uh, people that have died in one year than people that have died in, in American wars the whole while America had wars. Come on. You got a problem, but you don't want to face your problem. 
you got to face these problems. You got to iron them out. If something wrong with your car, something wrong with your house, mm. especially now, things wrong with your house, you got to get insurance money, you got to get money out of the bank and fix your house back. You don't just leave your house that kind of way. You got to fix it. You got to correct the wrong that's been done to you. And that's how it is. And these things are important to understand. These things got to be corrected. Now, we're looking at 1619 to 2019. We're going to deal with that. See, people don't understand the 2016-19 and 2013. We're going to deal with it this way. Okay? Because they ain't that many years off that, you know, still in the perimeter. So you can see. Now, when you see that this is supposed to happen, read Isaiah 54, 1 through 14. They're going to tell you about it. Read Jeremiah 24, 3 through 7. They're going to tell you about it. Read John 2, 1 through 10. They're going to tell you about it. See, and the Lord spoken to the, the fish. And notice this here. Fish is figurative. It was not a real fish, people. Come on. That's figurative. It was not a big, giant fish that swallowed up Jonah. That big lie that be teach, taught in the pulpit. That's a lie. It was not a fish. It was written for initiates to understand how to go in there and translate it properly and teach the people right. It was not a fish. The fish was something used like a ship used to, to carry people from one place to the other. And God permitted it to be because the word of God was being fulfilled. That power had to shift from the east to the west. And right now, America is the most powerful nation in the world. Before, the eastern nation was the most powerful nation in the world. Now, America is the most powerful nation in the world right now. And we must see this. Now, it's saying, and the Lord spoke unto the fish, and it vomited out Jonah on dry land. What's dry land? That's the coastal land. Black man, Jonah is a figurative part of you. And the son of man. You must have your territory. You ain't going to get right with God. In the story about the prophet's son, the older son, which deal with the Eurocentric America, mm -hmm. he never wanted you to have what God wanted you to have. If you wait for the white man to give you what you're supposed to have, you Like the rest of them sick, you sick too. How do you correct the sick? You need spiritual guidance. And where does that spiritual guidance come from? Out of the word of God, translate it correctly. That's where that spiritual guidance comes from. Why does it need to be translated correctly? Because you got to have a, a moral compass pointed in the direction of the cross philosophy. Not a white man sitting on a cross. It's a philosophy. And it starts from Genesis to Revelation. But you got to know it's there. So you never knew that the cross started way before Jesus. Okay. And see, no one told you the cross started before Jesus. Even Jesus said, any man that's going to fall out of me, let him first deny himself, take up his cross daily and follow me. That is a philosophy. It's known to the initiates, but it's not known to the common Christian. Black man, you definitely don't have it. Because if you had it, nobody will have your economics more strong than you. If you had it, you'll have banking system. You had it, you'll have corporations under your belt. If you had it, you'll have a landmass. 
If you had it, nobody won't be feeding you all this crazy food. If you had it, you'll have your own dress code and things that you want to have. If you had it, no one will tell you about God. You'll be telling them about God. If you had it, no political body or no judge or any legislation other than the judge and the people that's coming out of your own political environment will have rule over you. So don't tell me you got it because I know what it is and I know you don't have it. The white man have knowledge of it, but he didn't give it to you. You put your hand and pray to lead it to the flag and you telling these people to pray to lead to the flag and you don't know that the national anthem was written against you, black man. But ain't nobody told you that. Go back and study the national anthem. Slaves wanted to rise up with the British in order to come against the United States, and the United States wanted to crush, crush them and follow the words in the national anthem about you, your destruction. But then they're going to tell you on TV, uh, you know it's bad to take a knee and bow to something. When the brother talked to a soldier, and the soldier said, look, man, Honor the soldiers by bowing to your knee. That's how we do it. And that's what the ball players did. And then they want to come against him. And he was honoring the fallen soldiers. And then the news twisted it and made it out of something it wasn't. That is this problem with America right now. They twisting stuff and telling you rather tell you a lie than they tell you the truth. Then the truth got to catch up with the lie. But after the line of spill, the thing that mess everything up, it's hard for the truth sometimes to get it right. Because in some people's mind, it's already going to be messed up. Now, what we need to do is understand that this is a lecture that we need to see. We need to understand this is a book that you need to get. Please order this book as soon as possible. You could go to Barnes & Noble, you could go to Amazon, you could order this book, and uh, I'm going to have it very soon where you could write me and you could get uh, Respond, and you could, get a, uh, you could get a signed copy of this book from me for your convenience that you could have. And uh, also when you do it, I'm going to have you to put your name there so I could uh, recognize you personally. And I want you to have this because this is... This book is a real deal. Please, order the book. And in this, I'm not telling people to hate America. This is not what this lecture is about. I'm telling the people to really love America. Help America come out of the ill by you doing the right thing and by you helping America do the right thing. Because you have mass incarceration of individuals right now. I heard a story about a guy got 50 years, 50 years put into jail during the time of Clinton uh, war, Reagan war on drugs. 50 years put into to, uh, prison for selling marijuana. Oh, Lord. Could you ever imagine anything that, like that can happen? 50 years for selling marijuana? Marijuana, people. Now, marijuana is known as a drug now that the doctors recognize it can help people with certain illness. But he was put in there for selling marijuana, or distributing marijuana, small quantity. But he was put in there because they had a law on the war on drugs. It wasn't no war on drugs, it was a war on the black community. Come on, let, let's correct this now. White America, let's open your heart and your mind and say, we're going to correct this. We're going to go down in history known to correct this. We're going to do God's will because this is the will of God for us to correct this ill, to come out of this condition. Come on, there's some good Caucasians, some good white folks out there. And I'm depending on it. God is depending on it. The universe is depending on it. Step up to the plate. This is the time. We need each other. I'm not excluding the white folks from this. You're the main player in this thing. Black folks got to wake up in the right leader. You, you need a new direction, man. You in the pulpit hollering Jesus and all this and sounding good, but then you ain't doing nothing in your community, man. Come on. Wake up, brother. You ain't part of the solution. You being a part of the problem. And God don't like that. So let's deal with it as it is. Come on, black preacher. Come on, man.
Let's get this thing together. This is the time for the resurrection of the dead. And the dead is in America. So let's have a good time today. Okay, listen to this. Have your friends listen to this. And please, when you see this, point it toward your friends so that they can see it too. Let's build this thing now. This is a movement. Let's build this thing now. Okay? This is bigger than Black Lives Matter. This is bigger than all that. This is about the moral compass of America. It's bigger than all of that. America future matters. And America need to get on board. America need to get on board and correct this iniquity of the animal rights, which is the American. We need to correct it because God is speaking to America now. This is what time it is. And I'm going to tell you like we always say, America, we love you. And Let's come together and make this thing right. Unity is the key. So let's bring unity among the masses of God's people. Let's do the right thing. Come on, church. You're supposed to be the forerunner. We're sitting back, going to church and not getting out, doing the right thing. This is our time. So I love you, and may God be with you, and have a beautiful, blessed day. Thank you.